Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for LowPost.com and I'm back again with lesson three in our Fusion Fundamentals course. And in this lesson, we're talking keyframing. Keyframing, obviously, the process of creating animation inside of your composites. Now, I want to remind you that I'm sure that you probably have questions, you probably have comments, and things that you want to say about this tutorial series. So what I encourage you to do is head on over to our forums at lowpost.com slash forums, post it there, we'll get back to you, and we'll keep this conversation going beyond the tutorials. Okay, I want to keep this introduction short because we have a lot to get to, so let's get started. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into DaVinci Resolve. You'll see we're back to our familiar timeline layout with our three clips and let's just take the first clip and let's get it into fusion we know to do that all we're simply going to do is park over top of it we're going to head to the fusion module and all of our clips all one of them are now in fusion and they're ready to work with i am going to because we've now gotten into the habit of renaming my nodes i'm going to call this standard clip because we're only really going to be dealing with one clip in this lesson, I don't need to be specific in what we name it. I'm just going to say OK. And let's now talk about the little mini lesson that I like to put before each one of our main lessons. Now, you'll remember in our last lesson, we talked about the color coding of nodes. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick any node. doesn't really matter which one. I'll just pick the transform node. I'm just going to drop it in there. And you'll notice that the color, again here, is the same across the same type of nodes that I put in. You'll see there's resize there's transform let's go to one of my color correction nodes you'll see that one gets a different color what i'd like to do is i'd like to point something else out that you may have seen but maybe not taken too much notice to now to show you this i'm going to pick a very specific node i'm going to choose the merge node now the first problem that you're always going to run into is tracking this node down now the easiest but a little bit of a longer way to do it is to navigate up to the effects library you can come down to your tools you can come down to composite and you can find the merge node right there to me that process is a little bit long now you might be able to come along the node toolbar down here at the bottom and say oh okay there's the merge node right there if you're new to fusion it's a little bit tricky to track down what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut to call up the select tool window you'll see that i've actually already called up merge but if i was to come in and punch in merge You'll see that it's going to call up merge right away. I can simply hit enter and that will now be dropped into my node window. Now what I want to draw your attention to is the inputs of this node. Now the merge node, which we're going to talk about in our next lesson, has three inputs. It has a foreground input, it has a background input, and it has a mask input. Now you've probably seen the mask input in different nodes already. It's represented by the blue input right here. You'll see as I hover over it, I'm told it's the mask effect input, okay? But you'll notice that we have these two other inputs. One is orange and one is green. Now what's important to keep in mind is that these colors are the same across all the nodes. If you ever see a green node input, that represents a foreground input, okay? The orange input represents an input for the background. Okay, so let's just call up a different node here, for example. Let's call up one of my color correction nodes, the brightness and contrast node. I love this node. Now, I shouldn't have had merge selected when I did that, so I'm just going to delete it. And you'll notice that this node only has two inputs. It has a mask input there at the top, and it has what we'll call a background input, but it's really only a standard media input, meaning there's no foreground and background input with this node, just one. One clip goes in one clip goes out. So if I was to take my node chain, put it into brightness and contrast, take the output of that node and put it into media one out and simply get in and make an adjustment. In this case to the gain, you'll see we now have a composite that is all ready to go with only one input going through it. Now it's going to be very cool when we talk about masking, which is coming up in a couple lessons you're going to see how we can get in and utilize the mask input of not only the clips, but of the effects as well to create very cool, very tailored effects looks very quickly. Now, one thing I've tried to do with these lessons is I've tried to make them almost chained together. We talked in the previous lesson about the keyframe window. And we're going to go back to it in this lesson, but we're going to add another window into the mix as well when we talk about keyframing. So let's do that right now. I'm just going to delete the brightness and contrast node. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to my favorite standard effect, which is the blur node. Now I'm just going to add the blur node in between 
our media in and media out nodes. We'll make sure that our media in node is selected so that that blur node is added downstream or down the chain. Okay. Now to get in and to add keyframes to create an animation, what we're going to do is we're going to come back to about here, I think, and I'm going to navigate up to where the blur size is, and we're just going to drag its value back down to zero, because what I want to do with this blur effect is have it start at zero, work its way up to 10, and then stop there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a keyframe right over here by simply clicking on the Add Keyframe button, just like such, and I'm now going to drag down. Now, I want to point out that as I moved away from where I was parked in the timeline, you'll now see that there's this little white line that represents that there is a keyframe for something. We don't know what, but there's a keyframe for something there. Now, I'm actually just going to undo what I just did because I want to show you what we know when we add a keyframe. Let's come back here, okay? So we're going to add that keyframe, and two things are going to happen. One, that little bar is going to be added. Second of all, a keyframe icon is going to be added to the blur nodes that we're going to know that this node has animation with it. Okay, now let's come down to about here, I would say. And what we're going to do is we're just going to change the blur size. Now I can do it one of two ways. I could just grab the value and drag it up. Or if I want a very specific value, I can simply just select the input box. I'm just going to punch in a value of 10. This will be updated. You'll see that a keyframe has been added. We can see here a keyframe has been added as well. And we now have an animation of this blur effect in our composite. Now what I also want to point out is the fact that once we've added two keyframes, we now have the ability to actually move between them by simply utilizing the forwards and back arrows that have been added to the blur size parameter, okay? Now what we want to do now is to see exactly what's going on with this keyframe, okay? Now you remember in the last lesson we talked about that keyframe window, let's go back to it for right now. Now what I'm also going to do is just give us a little bit more screen real estate here like such. I'm just going to move my nodes over and we'll just bring our keyframe window over just a little bit. Now a couple other things that I wanted to show you that I didn't show you in the last lesson. You'll see things are looking a little bit small right now. So what I'd like to do is just zoom in on this window. I'd actually like to fill it to the frame. And you'll see that we could do that one of two ways. We can drag in like such or what I like to do is keep it simple. I like to come in and just say let's zoom this window to fit so this way now everything is perfect, centered, big, ready to go, okay? Now let's take a look at what's happened once we've added this animation in here. You'll now see that I actually have a visual representation of the two little ticks that have been added in my timeline right here. You'll see there's that first keyframe, there's the last keyframe. I can also twirl it down just so I get a little bit better representation of exactly what is going on with these two keyframes. Now, with that being said, what this window, the keyframes window, gives me the ability to do very quickly and very easily is adjust these keyframes, okay? Many people think that what we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, okay, let's make sure we have the blur node selected. Let's come back to blur. Let's be jumping around, adding, removing keyframes. You don't have to do any of that, okay? If we've decided that this keyframe doesn't start where we want it to start, all we have to do is simply grab that keyframe value right here simply drag it down the keyframe window wherever we want it to start or even earlier and it's immediately updated. Now you'll see up in our little time bar there that keyframe icon jumping around. Okay, I'm just going to bring it to about here. Of course we can do the exact same thing with the outgoing keyframe. Now what I also like and it's almost like a little hidden feature is the fact that you can get in at any point. Let's just come down to about here. Okay. I'm going to come down to about here and I'm going to add a keyframe. Okay, I could simply come up, add the keyframe right there. But what I'd like to now do is I'd like to hold this value a little bit of a ways to maybe about here. Okay, now how you might think that we'd do that is we'd come up, we'd add another keyframe, we'd change its value to match the keyframe value of this keyframe, and we'll be all set. But I'm actually not going to do that. All I'm going to do is simply hold Command on the Mac, Control on Windows, and I'm going to click on that keyframe and I'm going to drag it down like such, and what we've now just done is added a hold value to this keyframe. It's basically taken this keyframe and it's copied it, and we've repositioned it where we want it to be. So now what we actually have is a blur that starts to come in, holds its value here, and then finishes that blur transition to the value of 10 at the end of our animation. Okay? 
Now this is all great and everything, and I think what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm just gonna come back and remove those two keyframes that I just added in the middle because I wanna take this one step further now. I'm all about taking things one step, one step, one step, okay? What I'd like to do now is to actually have a visual representation of what's going on with these keyframes so I can actually adjust them a different way and even a more dynamic way. So how do we go about doing that? What we're gonna do is we're gonna call up the spline window. Now, before I call up the spline window, I am just going to remove the nodes window because to be honest, I don't really need to see those nodes because we're not gonna be doing very much with them. Now you'll notice that when I call up the spline window, nothing is here. I don't actually see anything happening. Let's just adjust our window here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the blur size parameter. Now keep in mind, if I got in and adjusted a lot more parameters inside of blur, I would actually see them here inside the keyframe window and then I would see them represented over here inside of the spline window. Now the spline window represents the animation curve of this animation we've created. Now what do I mean by that? Well, it's important to understand animation and how it works. Basically what we've done with this animation is that we've had it go from a value of zero to a value of 10. Now I want you to think of it like this. When you get into a car and you start driving a car, you're gonna get in, you're gonna sit down, you're gonna put your foot on the gas and the car's gonna start to accelerate. So for example, if you need to get from point A to point B, you're gonna get in, put your foot on the gas, car's gonna accelerate up to your top speed, once you're at your top speed, you'll say, oh, there's my destination. I now need to put my foot on the brake to slow down to come to a stop, okay? Now, that is, I'll say, sort of the ideal way to think of an animation, but that's not the way that animation works here. The way that this animation works is I want you to imagine you're gonna drive 60 miles an hour. It's the equivalent of getting in your car, stepping on the gas, the car instantly starts going 60 miles an hour. When you put your foot on the brake, it immediately stops. That's what's happening with our animation here, okay? Starts going full speed, comes to a stop right there, and it's done. But maybe I'd like to actually get in and ease into and ease out of these keyframes. Okay, well I have the ability to do that by selecting any one of them. Now, as soon as I select one of those keyframes, you'll see that something's appeared. And what this actually represents is a Bezier handle. So we can actually get in and add animation curves to our keyframes. So what would happen in this case if I dragged it straight up is that animation would start going super quick and then it would slow down right when it gets to about the middle to then come to a stop, okay? Now for me, what I like to do is I actually like to come in and try to make this process as easy as possible. You'll notice as soon as I select the first keyframe, a few of my tools have become active down here. Now the one that I use more than any is simply the smooth keyframe assistant. Now I call them keyframe assistants because I come from an After Effects background so you'll probably hear me refer to them as keyframe assistants so just keep that in mind as we're working, okay? So for me to get in and to adjust the animation of this keyframe, all I'm gonna do is simply smooth it out. You'll now see that we ramp into the movement of this keyframe but then still come to a hard stop. So I can select this keyframe here smooth it out as well. So now what we're gonna be doing, much like driving a car, is accelerating into that speed and then decelerating when we get to the next keyframe. Now, to be honest, I could go through all of these and we could be here for an hour. So what I encourage you to do is to get in and play around with them. But you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Kev, what's happened here, okay? You only have two tools available. What about all of these tools in here? Well, how do we get in and work with those? Well, let me just undo what I just did here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna select just one keyframe, but I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and I'm gonna select two keyframes. Now keep in mind, I've selected two. You could select two, three, four, 10, 20, doesn't matter. But as soon as I select those two keyframes, you'll now see that a whole bunch of other parameters have now come alive that we can get in and adjust. My personal favorite other ones are the step in and step out, or as they're referred to in After Effects as toggle hold keyframe. So you'll see, and what I have the ability to do here is I'm just gonna jump down to about the midway point here, okay? I'm just gonna deselect everything. I'm actually gonna add another keyframe value right here, okay? Now with this keyframe value added, what we have the ability to now do is I'm going to come back, I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard to select this and to select this keyframe here, and I'm now gonna come in and create a step animation, meaning that what's gonna happen is once we get to each one of these keyframes, we're gonna take a jump in blur. We're gonna jump to this value. We're gonna jump to that value. So you'll see, if I come back now, you'll see nothing, 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 jump. Nothing, 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 jump, okay? 
So this is another great way if you wanted to have, let's say, an image that you had on the screen and have its position jump all over the place, this is how you would go about doing it. Oh, and by the way, you can even get in once that you've done this, select all those keyframes, and you can do it one way or you can do it the other. Now, there's all kinds of other great keyframe assistants in here that I encourage you to get in and check out, including reverse, as well as even getting in and being able to create loop animations right here from within the spline window. All right, our lesson's done, but the conversation has only just started. I know you probably have questions, you probably have comments, and what I do is I encourage you to head on over to the forums at lowpost.com forums and post those questions and comments. And if you have a question for me, you can always send it to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. <laughs>